everybody, my name is Ayai. I'm representing the Fulcrum today, and today we're interviewing Professor Raja Kumar. Professor Raja Kumar, can you please introduce yourself really quickly to everybody? Yeah, so my name is Rajinder Raja Kumar. Um, I'm originally from Montreal. Uh, I'm a professor here at the University of Ottawa. I teach developmental bio and molecular bio, and also have a research lab here. All right, perfect. And I understand that congratulations are in order because you were uh, you're awarded the best prof from the Science Student Association. So congratulations for that. So today we're going to go through some questions that I have prepared for you. And then we have some questions from some of your past and current students. And then we're going to go through some Rate My Prof. I just want you to tell us about your journey to becoming a professor. As a kid, I was really into science in general. Mm -hmm. um, I was nine when Jurassic Park came out and that was a pivotal moment for me in realizing how much I th think DNA is a cool thing yeah. and molecular biology. Of course there's a lot of people who are inspired with paleontology from that movie but let's not forget what was the actual way that they resurrected the dinosaurs, mm -hmm. right? Just fast forward some time I fell in love with biology particularly in high school, continued in my undergrad and uh, once I got into um, some research experience during my undergrad time, um, I realized pretty quickly I loved research, but at the same time, I really loved to teach. And mm -hmm. being a prof at a university is an opportunity to do both teaching and research at the same time. And so it kind of all made it pretty obvious to me that it would be a nice fit. All right, so we want to get to know you, the person behind the professor. What do you enjoy doing in your free time outside of teaching? Yeah, free time wise, well, I will say that uh, being a prof at a university like U Ottawa, that's an awesome place that, you know, expects high quality teaching and research. It's hard to find here and there free time, but I do have a family, wife and two kids. My two boys, they're six and ten, and they're quite a handful. And so a lot of my quote unquote free time is family time. Yeah. Um, to help balance my work life, you know, balance, so to speak. I love spending time with my kids, going out, having fun with them watching movies, going to museums. We're in Ottawa, lots of museums, obviously. Right. Mm -hmm. Traveling, stuff like that. What are you looking, where are you looking to travel next with your family, I guess? Yeah, well, actually, we just got back from uh, Boston a week, a week ago. Um, I was, we lived in Boston during my second postdoctoral fellowship when I was at Harvard Medical School and so my kids grew up there and um, it was fun to go back, visit old favorite foods, favorite scenes and sites mm -hmm. and also my younger brother is in uh, at MIT now and so it was fun to go visit him and his wife and kid but then future travels I'm not sure um, my kids are dying to go to New York City or we might go somewhere in Europe okay. we love to travel in general That's so wonderful. We'll see. wonderful and uh, can you share a memorable moment from your teaching career that has had a significant impact on you I'd say probably um, it actually started you know, over a, a decade and a half ago when I first got an opportunity to teach when I was at McGill University. Long story short, I swapped in for a guest lecture for a prof who was going away on a conference. He kind of gave me free reign to teach a lecture in his molecular biology course, which was like over 600 students in a big auditorium. I I fell in love with it immediately. You know, as that mo I was just unfolding and after teaching that class, the adrenaline rush, I knew I'd love teaching moving forward. Now fast forward to what I think is probably my two favorite teaching moments. So far, they're both at U Ottawa. Um, the first is when I first taught Dev Bio, fall 2021. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was my first in-person lecture. You know, the class was small enough enrollment that it could fit in a larger auditorium for safety reasons and everything with COVID. And uh, I asked the class, you know, I pulled them, how many of you is this the first time you've done class in person? Mm -hmm. And the whole class raised their hand. And it was quiet for a minute because uh, everyone was looking around and like realizing, you know, that that was the situation and you know I kind of said to them you know well you know we're all in this together you know and let's try to make the best of this uh, you know moving forward getting a chance to feel a little normal again uh, from a university life perspective right yeah. that moment really kept it real you know like mm -hmm. I felt it that we were all in it together and then fast forward to now this past fall I had an interesting moment on Halloween teaching molecular bio that was another yeah. big moment <laughs> yeah yeah, I remember, I remember that moment. Yeah. All right, I'm moving on now to some questions from some of your students. One very important question. This is a real question. Why are you so cool? 
<laughs> why am I so cool? Yeah, I, the student straight up said, "Why am I so That's cool?" That's literally what they put in. Oh well, that made my day. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> why is this boomer mil- geriatric millennial cool? I don't know. Uh, I mean, I honestly, I don't know if the answer is the question, but I just try to be authentic and genuine mm. in my class, classes and in, in the lab with my students in the lab. Um, you know, it wasn't that long ago that I was an undergrad and eventually right. a graduate student. And so I know what it's like to be in a classroom, for example, where you can see that the person's passionate about what they do and they mm. love what they're doing. And I, I love both teaching itself, but also the material. I've been fortunate enough to teach molecular bio and dev bio two topics that I really hold dear to my heart. And so so you take that and you also take the fact that I love being on the cutting edge of, of just knowledge and info and technology and everything. Yeah. And so I try to make my classes as fresh as possible subject wise mm-hmm. to get people inspired and going and having fun with it. And I don't know, I think it's just loving what you do, having a passion for what you do and trying to convey that to everyone around you so that yeah. you have it at this Dial this reciprocity of awesomeness in the classroom and in the lab. And if that equal it ends up being cool, so be it. Yeah. You know? I think uh, I think all your students can tell that you're very passionate about the things that you teach and also your research as well. Um, this one is kind of says the same thing. It's obvious that you are considered as a great pro- professor. What do you consider to be a great student? With the immense amount of research and expanded science the world has gained today, how do you suggest someone should start looking to begin research on their own? Ah, so I guess for me, the great student, two sides of it, in the classroom and in the research mm-hmm. environment as the question ended. In the classroom, I think a good student is one who just wants to get the most out of the experience. You know, you pay to go to school. You could come to class. You can watch my Bright Space recordings. I try to make the classes available and accessible to students as much as possible. But, uh, you know, trying to get involved in the class, ask questions, Mm -hmm. you know, steer up discussion in the class. I mean, some of the questions students ask in class are just awesome. Get me thinking, on my toes thinking, and, uh, you know, talk discussions that continue even after class. Um, So students wanting to get the most of the experience, right? So that's one thing. Then in the lab and preparing for trying to get into research environment, I think students who just, you know, uh, find a topic that really motivates them and tries to pursue research opportunities that can allow them to do that kind of stuff. So, you know, bringing motivation and drive initiative, creativity. Yeah, I mean, those are the kind of the recipe, I think, for not just being a good student per se, from my perspective, but being the best student you can be to get the most for yourself Mm -hmm. out of the experience. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Well, this actually also follows up on research, but more about you are there any upcoming projects or research directions that you're excited about exploring yeah i mean currently in the lab there are kind of two axes of the research Mm -hmm. our research program one is uh kind of organism first type projects and the other one's kind of more mechanism first so the organism force first is more like you know, we work on ants in the lab and how, using them to understand how genes in the environment interact during development in particular to give rise to, ev- you know, phenotypic variation that can be relevant in an evolutionary context or biomedical context. And, you know, students who are organism first, they're thinking more about trait variation, you know, people in the lab studying development and evolution of eyes or mandibles, other really cool phenotype traits that ants exhibit across their cast and in their colonies that are really cool. We want to then figure out, you know, the underlying basis of those types of uh, traits and variation. Then we have another axis, the mechanism first kind of axis to the lab where people are really interested in particular mechanisms, say epigenetic mechanisms, for instance. People are in- really interested in microRNAs, histone modifications, and so they're really driven to study those types of levels of biology, but in the ant context because it's just a really cool system to study those mechanisms. So a whole bunch of cool stuff. I mean, it all centers on developmental biology, cool molecular mechanisms that govern the developmental process, mm-hmm. and there's lots of Cool topics in yeah. that kind of context right now. Yeah, Isn't it interesting. Yeah. Uh, okay, this is the last, honestly, one of the most incre- important questions in <laughs> my <Uh-oh>. opinion. <laughs> How come we've never seen Professor Raja Kumar and Spider Man in the same room? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that kind of uh, relates to what I was foreshadowing earlier when I, you asked me what my favorite teaching moments mm-hmm. are. Yeah. So yes, there was a guest lecture on Halloween last fall semester in my class who taught an interesting an interesting lecture on the genetic code, if I remember correctly. So my buddy Spider-Man came by 
and uh, I think he did a good job. Yeah. I don't know. You were in the class. Did you think he class. did a good job? I think he was amazing. And uh, yeah, we go way back. Uh, why aren't we in the same place at the same time? I mean, he was filling in for me. I mean, yeah. maybe maybe we can double lecture a class in the upcoming school year. I don't know. Yeah. I've been thinking about really cool, innovative teaching ideas for the upcoming year. Maybe you can pull students uh, about it. Uh, I was thinking actually of doing a debate in one of my classes on some biomedical topics that are burning topics, you know, especially in my developmental biology class where there's lots of really cool, fascinating developmental biology topics that have not necessarily controversy, controversy that's driving the debate, but just are topics worth discussing, mm -hmm. right? And so I figured actually, you know, creating a situation where the class can actually have debate, open debate in the class. I don't know, maybe uh, my buddy Peter Parker can come by and help uh, moderate it with yeah, me. That yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Uh, what kind of questions? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of uh, questions would you do in the debate, like? Oh man, I don't even know where to begin. I mean, it could be the Marco. I mean, Marco Bao also has a lot of cool topics to debate. It's yeah. just it's like four over four hundred students. That would be a little harder to right. do. Yeah, and true. while Dev Bao was like thirty students when before I got here, and it's now like one hundred and eighty or so. Mm -hmm. Um, that also is tough, but uh, I think that that would be the easier one to try to pull off. And so Dev Bio question, I mean, there's lots of things like, for, you know, in, in Dev Bio, you know, now we've, you know, figured out factors that, you know, you can turn any cell into an induced pluripotent stem cell and kind of the sky's the limit for what you can do with that biomedical treatments, right. therapeutics, all kinds of cool stuff, what to do with that in the context of, for example, like organoids, which is the way to model kind of a pseudo in vivo context, in vitro in vivo blurring, mm -hmm. blurred context to do research on and what could be some biomedical issues that can arise, or biomedical, mm -hmm. biomedical ethical issues that right. can arise right. because it's now going into what are called embryoids. So like basically embryos in a dish kind of thing. It's not exactly that right now, but the concepts, the, the ideas, the, the questions arise, you know, things like CRISPR, um, you know, it's already, happened such that humans they're the first crispered so quote-unquote humans have have happened you know oh. during covid times uh in the last year or two and uh, that was a thing and you know what is what is the implications of being able to do genomic engineering on individuals and not just to affect them but if it's influencing the germline how that can impact their future generations and mm -hmm. You know, there's so many things that can come along with molecular and bio burning questions related to you know cloning genetic engineering so on and so forth so i think it could be i think it'd be super cool yeah I think too, uh, really opportunity for students to talk talk their their viewpoints on, yeah. on some of these burning topics in biology mm -hmm. yeah all right that's great so i've actually gone through all the questions so we're gonna move on to the rate my prof section but first i just uh want you to kind of tell us what your experience has been with rate my prof oh my experience with rate my prof yeah. uh you know, Ray My Prof actually goes back in the day, you know? Mm -hmm. um, like you were uh, using it, checking it I mean, for your professors? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, yes, I, I, I did. Okay. I'm not going to lie, I did. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I mean, it's a great tool for students to, you know, the balancing, you know, the school classes, why this yeah. class or another, you know, um, why this prof over another prof in case mm -hmm. there's multiple profs that offer a similar topic. Um, I do think there's a lot of good to it. I also think it could be sometimes abused mm -hmm. where some students who just genuinely, for whatever other alter personal reason they didn't like the prof or the class might kind of vent yeah. themselves on it, um, which, you know, it is, c'est la vie, it is what it is. But yes, I did use it in my prof. You know, back in the day, and it's been ban and banned, obviously, because of lawsuits, they used to ha not just have like difficulty factor and you know, the overall rating. Mm -hmm. um, and would I take the course again? It was also like chili pepper factor. Like props were getting rated on hotness levels, which <laughs> sounds ridiculous, but I'm telling you it's true. Google it, and uh, it was uh, it was weird. It was totally weird. Yeah. You know, seeing props get like That's chili so pepper crazy. rating. I'm not I'm not joking. It was legit. There was like a chili pepper rating, mm -hmm. and I'm so I'm so glad that this doesn't it's exist anymore. Is <laughs> that just weird? Mm -hmm. um, you know, from a pers props perspective, you know, I I I have too much. PTSD of you know starting teaching during COVID all that kind of thing to go check rate my prof or Reddit or Discord yeah. boards or all yeah. those things which all exist yeah. you know now it's just too kind of overwhelming mm -hmm. but students came to me you know at the beginning of the semester after molecular bios last semester and like you know you really should check rate my prof how it's going yeah um, and I was like come on whatever and you know they're like okay let me read you one 
or two, and they started reading to me. I was like, "What? The? This is <laughs> holy moly! This is crazy! Right. Like, really?" And there's some of the comments are just off the hook. They're just ridiculous. And uh, it, but it made me feel great about you know the effort I put into the classes. Yeah. So I, I do think Rayman Prof has a lot of goodness to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but with any any you know app and stuff, you know things like that, there's a pros and cons. But yeah, exactly. hopefully the pros exactly. outweigh the cons for those kinds of things. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, what do you think your score is on Read My Prof out of five? You know, full transparency, not gonna lie, my students did tell me I'm doing pretty well. Okay. They didn't tell me the actual number per se. Okay. But, like, you know, they were like, you know, think about like Google reviews or Yelp or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, what would be my threshold to go to, say, a restaurant out of five? And so they got that out of me and were like, yeah, you probably go to your class then. You right. Know, you go to your restaurant, okay. so to speak. So I know I'm doing okay, okay but well. uh, I, I don't know. Tell me. Okay. You're doing more than okay. Like, I mean, obviously, I think people really like you. You got, you have a five out of five on Read My Prop. You're, you're... So, okay. I guess I'll take my class. Right, then. Right. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, five that's five. ridiculous, man. I don't even know that's possible. Well, How that's is that possible. even statistically possible? I don't, I don't that's know crazy. how you calculated, but yeah, you five have a out lot of, five. of good That's reviews. wild. That's yeah. wild. What's my difficulty rating like? Um, I don't think it's, I don't it's think it's so bad. I was looking I hope it's somewhere in the them. middle. I want, no, you know, Goldilocks. Not I, too hard, not too easy, you know? Well, I think I was scrolling <laughs> through. I saw like a couple threes, but I think a lot of them were ones. Oh yeah? It's hard? <laughs> no, one as in easy. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that class averages to be about like high B plus, which yeah. to be honest with you, that's what I want the class to be. Exactly. I, I want classes to be such that, you know, you know, sometimes you get the, I'm not putting on any props but sometimes you don't want students to get the impression that props want classes to be hard just mm. to stroke the ego that like oh yeah that props class is so hard and they're thinking like yeah i've got that hard class that mm -hmm. you know write a passage you take that class you pass it you know you're you're a grown-up now like <laughs> That's not how school should be. I yeah. mean, you should, guys should look forward to coming to class. And even when it comes to evaluations, I'm not looking forward to students, you know, enjoying the midterm. Mm -hmm. Although I will say, you know, one thing, after the final of Molecular Bio in last December, there was like a good five, you know, five or six students wanted to take selfies with me. Oh, <laughs> I'm no, not I joking. I doing the same thing. Oh, yeah? I should have, I should well, have. you know what? Some students took some selfies. Well, I took selfies. With, I don't know what to It was kind of surreal. I was like, okay. You know, I was running, t exhausted, running around taking questions from students yeah. in the final in the gym. We were like, hey, you to take selfies. And so, I mean, that, I mean, that wasn't what I was going for. Right. Right? But I was going for... Students enjoying the class. They yeah. felt like they finished it and they learned something about molecular biology or developmental biology. Yeah. They felt like they, you know, got an experience out of it. Um, you know, the best they can do with large classes, right? But still, they felt like they got something out of it. And I certainly got something out of it. Mm -hmm. I really learned a lot in the experience. Some of the questions mm -hmm. were great, you know, uh, that I things I just genuinely didn't know. I think you'll find, like, when you read some of the reviews that... Yeah, your goal has been reached. I think a lot of students, it's not necessarily that it's just like an easy, like I wouldn't consider the classes bird courses, but yeah. I think um, because you're so passionate about what you teach, people enjoy it and yeah. then they can enjoy studying for it. Yeah. And you're also like, I, you're not like a trickster when it comes to the way you mark <laughs> yeah. things, the way yeah. you like test people. You're yeah. not going to like say it's not on the exam and then it's actually on the exam. So yeah. yeah. So I think that's what people really appreciate. But yeah, I think you should read your, you should read your I reviews. should. I should. Again, like I, I feel like I, I try to prepare the students for generally knowing what I'm looking for in the midterms uh -huh. and the final, yeah. you know, so there's no surprises. And I feel like you know, uh, I'm clear about, how, you know, what to take away from the classes and highlights from the classes. And I think that I think that it reflects well in how great the students are doing. Yeah. You know, I certainly don't. It's not easy con on concepts. I'm teaching, you know, the state of the art, cutting edge, super cool stuff. Some of the stuff people I isn't even published yet. And so I know it's not the difficulty of the complexity of the of the knowledge they're getting. Right. So, yeah, it's great. I'm great. I'm glad to hear that. All right, Professor, are you ready to read some of your Rate My Prof reviews? I think so. These are going to be first, you know, reactions that you're going to see here. So, um, yeah, I'm ready to go. All right. Oh, quality five, difficulty two. Okay. Molecular biology is this dude's bread and butter, said with love. Lectures can go into lots of detail, but the main principles are what really matters and what is tested on. One of the few profs who care about teaching and their students learning would and probably will take a class he teaches again. Uh, and also they wrote, uh, tagged me as hilarious, respected, and amazing lectures. Alrighty then, okay. Oh geez. <laughs> 
<laughs> this has got to go bad eventually. Oh my gosh. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Best professor. There's a lot of information to remember, but the exams reflect exactly what we saw in class. The professor is very passionate about the material and very fun. Your friendly neighborhood student. <laughs> inspirational and respected already i like that friendly neighborhood student that's a good you know shout out to uh, the halloween lecture five out of five hands down the best prof of my undergrad <laughs> sheesh let's see here quality five out of five the best friendly neighborhood prof Oh, clearly that lecture stuck, man. Oh my gosh. Highly recommend taking any class with him. Good to know. Maybe that's why my dev bio class exploded. I heard through the grapevine, the admin was freaking out how to expand the class to different, cl you know, bigger classroom. Five out of five. Okay. He is so kawaii, but also a little chaotic. Okay. That is like, that's that. I like that. I'm not going to lie. I love Hawaii and I've never been to the island of Kauai. Um, I'm more of a Maui guy. I'm not going to lie. I'm a little bit more of a Maui guy, but. But I'll I'll settle for some Kawhi, I'm not gonna lie. Um, also a little chaotic, I like that. I like that. It wasn't a lot chaotic, so there's a little bit of composure. I like that. If he was less likable, I probably would hate more on how disorganized he is, but he's an awesome guy. The content was very interesting and the tests were very easy if you studied at all. Wait, Kauai Kauai is not a, it's not Hawaii. What? <laughs> Isn't there an island of Kauai? Uh, Kauai is, I think it's Japanese. It means like adorable. Really? Yeah, it's not a place. What? It's an adjective. <laughs> no way. Yeah. Let me see this. One second. <laughs> no way. So yeah, there's a place, Kauai. Oh. Well, yeah. Kauai, he, they're not describing you as a place. Wait, that's definitely not what they're talking about. Yeah. Oh, this is so much better. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> What? See, I told you guys I was a freaking boomer, okay? <laughs> like, so, okay, so what is it again? Adorable. I think, adorable, yeah. Something. Okay. Yeah. I, that's it's good. A, it's a compliment. Yeah. Okay, so I'm adorable and chaotic. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, see, I'm that's keeping so up. Funny. I'm keeping up. It's all good. I'm keeping up. Five out of five. A really passionate guy who really wants you to not only succeed, but also find interest in the class he teaches. This is also true. Never tries to trick you and is always straightforward in his questions on tests. Truly enjoy this class and his teaching. Take him if you can. Very cool. Okay. Let's keep going. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. Okay. In all fairness. Okay. This was like January 10th, 2022. Meaning it's based on a class I taught for the first time. It was COVID, you know, I couldn't keep every student happy, right? Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. <laughs> this is exactly why I don't look at rate my prof, okay? And I'm glad I didn't at the time. Like clearly I can buffer my ego now with the ridiculous kawaii-ness that I am, okay? <laughs> but, uh, okay, I, I think I'm okay to read this. I think I'm ready, it's not too soon anymore. Professor Rajakumar was honestly one of the worst professors I have had in a while. I did succeed in this class. Ooh, there's some vendetta here. But I really had to work for my grade. The material is extremely overwhelming. It's one of those side eye, you know, like, okay. His slideshows are screenshots of every image in the textbook. I did succeed in this class, but I really had to work for my grade. The material is extremely overwhelming. His si slideshows are screenshots of every image in the textbook and he was late to every class. That is preposterous. His reviews were helpful. The midterms exams followed them directly. I'm not exactly sure what to make of this review. I was the worst prof ever and yet apparently, and the difficulty was a four, but their grade was an A plus. <laughs> okay? Preposterous. Okay, let's keep going. I, ha I think I handled that one well. Five out of five. So. If I could give the man a 10 out of 5, I would. The material can be boring and heavy at times, but he really does his best to explain it well. His slides are extremely easy to follow and contain everything you need to know. His ex exams are very fair and exactly what he says they're going to be like. Okay. Okay. Oh my God. One. A one. A legit one. 
I would not have been able to handle this December 4th, 2021 when this was written. I promise you, I would not have been able to handle this, I don't think. I haven't read it yet, but a one out of five would have demoralized me, my friend. Consistently not on time and very unclear lectures where it is hard to hear a point in anything he says. Gives review lectures, which is nice, but his slides are only pictures from the textbook. So you have to teach yourself in the end. Avoid if possible. D a difficulty five, one out of five rating. That person clearly was seeking vengeance. All right, okay, help me feel a little better here. Here's a five out of five. Professor Rajakumar is honestly one of the best I've taken in university so far. His syllabus was very intimidating. Mandatory attendance, uh, strict lates. I don't remember putting that. That's probably like you Ottawa policy, dude. However, he was very laid back and chill. The course is very material heavy, but his midterms were easy slash fair. And he's a very good lecturer. Class was 30% midterms and 40% non-cumulative final. This is true. Okay, four to five. Going into his, this class, I was a, was a worried since he had never taught this class and did not have great reviews. However, Dr. Roger Kumar is a great lecturer and a professor that wants his students to excel. His exams are based on the slides and are very fair. He does not provide learning objectives, but expectations are still clear. Nice. All right, that's all for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Professor Rajakumar, do you have any closing remarks? Take my class. I think you'd really enjoy it. I try to make it for you guys. Count on, you know, put some trust in me. With great power comes great responsibility, and I promise you, you will have a kick-ass time taking my courses. Yeah. Thank you.